And we're live. He's still here. It's so. Oh my Although God. although I did recommend a new guest host in in chat and I don't know if you saw it, but maybe 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 we could have a new guest host. Is a Garfield calling me a whore? No. No, did you look at chat? No. Well, here. I'll I'll reply to it so you can see it. There we go. Just just download that and put that in place of uh, of self for for the episode. I think it's fitting too, to be honest. I think that might get me banned. How? How? It's, look look at it. I'm looking at it. It's just a cow shooting milk out of his udder. What's so bad about that? That's where do you think milk comes from? Not where that not where those udders are placed. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a risk of getting banned with that. I'm I'm gonna be real. Oh uh, I cowards. Okay. Um yeah, okay, hi. Wait a minute. I just yep. had the dumbest idea. This is this is gonna delay the episode by just like a, a couple of minutes, but uh Good. hey Yuki. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a gag for a future episode that I might have to fucking run by you that I think you're gonna love. Ooh, I ooh, let me, ooh a funny little treat. Little let me treat. let me open this up and show you what I'm thinking here, okay? It's a treat since for the we're, lads. We're still getting started here. This will be fine. Um, so I've I've told you both about how I've recently been playing around with a program called MUVR. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the one of the things that you can do in MUVR beyond like load up, you know, act like what feel like actual consoles and stuff is uh, yo oh, dot hack. But look at the fucking I saw the poster. Oh yeah, no, I've got all the posters in this room. I I know chat um, can't see, but what if what if one of these days we just replaced cell, right? Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with a stream of this. Yeah. Where I put a VHS into the fucking CRT and uh I just load it up with like commercials or something and put it and put the viewpoint like right here. Good lord, that's a penis. I'm I'm joking there's no but I, but I, I... <laughs> turn the fucking MUVR volume down, Jesus Christ. Hey, that'd be pretty neat. I think that'd actually be really cool, yeah. I'm assuming this is a common writer thing you just tossed in. Yeah, this is the first episode of Agito. Ah, uh, okay. But like, what if, what if one day we just put this fucking viewpoint in the bottom corner with Cell, and I just start running like nostalgic commercials? <laughs> I I would be <laughs> down for CRT that because then because <laughs> then we could all contribute like funny things that we see online and put that in there too, or we could put whole ass episodes of Dot Hack. Nobody would know. True. Oh my God. Until no, I that's check, a good idea. Until I check the podcast email and it says I have like 50 copyright strikes. Yeah, fine. All just, right. Just have the sound like super low. That way we're constantly talking over it and it becomes constructive. True. True. So for the uh, YouTube crowd, uh, hi, my name is Double. I am your conductor and I'm joined by two of my very bestest friends in the world, uh, Shora and Yuki. Hi. Truly, I am and so, for told. You can't <laughs> say that! Yes, I can. I have the pass. Well, yeah, I have the pass, too, but I mean, like... <laughs> Welcome, everybody, okay. to my last stream on this platform. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me explain. We we all loaded into Discord, right? And and I'm sitting there, Shora hops in, and all of a sudden, a, a voice clip starts playing. And I'm sitting here like, oh... You know, because when you can, when you pay for Nitro, you can have a little funny clip play when you load into a channel. It's fine. Uh, and then it's the F slur. And uh, this is at 10 in the morning. So I'm sitting here like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, oh, my man, God. You ever you ever just bust into somebody's fucking house and, and start fucking going, you know, this is. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, Yuki, you're probably going to have to actually bleep what he said earlier when you upload it to it YouTube. It's fine. Oh, okay. I edit this right. shit anyway. It's all good. Also, I'm pretty sure so Carl has better said editing. equivalent shit on stream before and never gotten in trouble. So, like, yeah, uh, that's funny. Twitch is Twitch is less uh, how to put it um, up their own ass about this shit than you'd think. OK, yeah, uh, like a few randos ago, <laughs> Bridget just accidentally had the F slur on stream for like a, <laughs> a minute. That's. I mean, like, I don't watch Mill Mike because Yu-Gi-Oh is a foreign concept to me. I don't know. Um, I've I, I see some of the shit that's printed on those cards, and my eyes glaze over. Uh, but it doesn't yeah. help that they just randomly decide they want to change out the terminology. Like, oh, it's no longer banish this card. It's move it to your banishment. What? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, I, okay. So uh, yeah, go this ahead. Is a, this is a recent development with Yu-Gi-Oh. For years, whenever like for years, they have just assumed that you understand what it means when a card tells you to banish it from the game. Banishment is like you just put the card to the side. It's counted as like out of the fucking game. There are v only a very small number of ways to move cards in and out of like banishment. It's it's like well, exile on Magic: The Gathering. Yeah, exactly. Well, Konami has recently started printing cards that when they make reference to banishing a card, they just call, they just say, like, move it to your banishment. And it's such an awkward fucking, like, reclassification of the terminology. That it's, it, it, it's, it's, so, it's so fucking stupid. Yeah, I... <clears throat> I can this understand. Is, this is on top of them changing yeah. graveyard to GY because, of course, they needed to save that much card text. Hey, we got a safe space for the fucking paragraph. <laughs> like, I can understand shortening something. Like, if it were originally, for example, um, you know, move it to your banishment, and then they decided to switch it to banish. I could totally understand doing that because you shorten it to into a term that you know people understand um but lengthening it i don't know that seems weird um but i mean magic does this sometimes too like they it's called an errata right they errata uh a keyword or the text of a card or something to clarify it or to preserve the uh the intent of the card into new formats where the original intent wouldn't make sense um but if you if you play magic you know, like I, I took a huge decade long break, but the terminology is still mostly the same, like death, touch, trample, all that, all those keywords mean the same thing. So See, the funny thing with magic is they don't ever like <coughs> change old terminology. They just add new terminology. Every new fucking set seems to have its own new fucking like, uh, here's a single keyword. Here you go. This keyword will determine everything for the rest of the fucking game. Yeah, yeah, like I remember there were some original cards or like within the first couple sets back in the day where there were cards that if you don't know how magic works, if you play a spell, you have to allow a response. So if I play a spell, somebody could counterspell it at what's called instant speed. Um, but then that gives me an opportunity to respond to their response, right? And it just keeps building on this stack until there's no more responses and then the stack resolves top down. Uh, but there yeah. was a card effect originally that said, uh, you may counter target spell. There can be no responses to this card. It was the end all right, but it was like a really long explanation on the card. And then they added a keyword to that called split second, which effectively means the same thing but now it's a keyword so you don't have to read this whole fucking long text you just see split second and understand oh okay if i play split second nobody can respond to me yeah <clears throat> um, so yeah i i get it Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of the same when it comes to that like <sighs> card response in Yu-Gi-Oh is fucking weird because it's, sometimes a card Oops. can be responded to, other times a card can't be responded to, and it's determined by a certain thing called spell speed, which is its own level of horseshit, dependent on the spell type. Uh, I, see, I hate... See, when somebody I starts... I hate playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in real life, 
because I don't want I don't know when I can and cannot fucking react to, to cards, which is why I prefer like the digital stuff where it tells me, hey, your opponent just did this response. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can understand that being really good. See, when I played Yu-Gi-Oh, I tried playing Master Duel like, I don't know, six months ago and gave up after three games. Um, <laughs> uh, I remember going, wow, where's the response where I can just pull out a dice board and start playing that one dungeon dice thing from the anime? <laughs> Anyways, card games aside, I'm sorry. Welcome to the Program Advanced Podcast where gonna, we talk about everything except Mega Man. beat the shit out of Duke Devlin. Yeah, many people want Who? to be Duke, what? Duke Devlin. Anyway, so hey, uh, hey episode <laughs> five access. Yep. Metal Hot okay. Spring. Ow, it's hot. That's the fucking literal that's, title. I hate that's it. That's the literal title. So when I saw the title, I was like, I, I can't believe we're getting a Hot Spring episode in our children's anime. But oh, yeah. it's not. Again, but it's not really like it is, but it isn't, if that makes sense. Like so the only character the you question. see. Go ahead. This new bitch. She a baddie for you? Did you take one look at this this kind of blue haired bitch and go, yeah? <laughs> okay, yeah, Yuki. I need to hear your response before I say mine. I mean, look, it's it's very <laughs> rare for uh, adults to show up in BN, so uh, <laughs> frame one, uh, regardless, <laughs> possible. But I feel I feel like she would want to be the uh, be the top, and uh, I don't know. I, Judging from this episode, she seems relentless. I'm going to be sucked dry. What what what's wrong, Yuki? A, a woman with authority scare you? Is that you're is right, that Yuki. what you're? No, is I don't have stamina saying? for her shit, dude. You're Coward. right, Yuki. She I do. Peg you as a bottom. <laughs> That's good, but. Uh... <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get into episode five. So. Um, in my notes, I forgot to mention this last episode we did, but I got to say every time the intro says double soul, I moan a little, sorry about that. Uh, it's just, it's just so good. It's so raw. You know what I mean? Um, but the episode intros, we start off with, uh, being reintroduced to bubble man. And I have to say <clears throat> out of all the, like, enemy net navis that we've had in this series so far i really genuinely think bubble man is my most hated i cannot stand this guy yeah he sucks he sucks so bad and this episode is nothing but bubble man trying and failing to do anything of note until like the very final encounter and then he gets chumped out by one attack i i hate bubble man um <clears throat> so <clears throat> wow i'm sorry I'm... um episode starts land mail and um dex's brother what's his name chi sao chi sao thank you uh find out that they're going on a school trip to the hot springs with miss mail and that is ultimately way less interesting than what you would think because i heard that and i went oh wow hot spring episode with miss mail let's go miss mail Fuck, that's not her name. Miss <laughs> I was waiting for I was waiting for you to click. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm gone. Mari. I'm sorry. Mari, thank you. I ugh, I have it in my notes. I'm looking at it in my notes. It's fine. Saying... It's gonna get worse when her sister gets introduced. <laughs> yeah, it will. Um so they all go on the hot spring trip. They take a train <clears throat> and they go to this hot spring town. If you're not familiar in Japan, there are cities that are their whole like thing. Their whole tourism thing is hot springs. So they, uh, you have people that come in by train loads just to go spend a day at the hot springs. So it's not abnormal. Um, and they are immediately introduced to the, friendly character of the episode um i never i never did get her name i wrote oh fuck she's hot and then i never tamako. wrote her name tamako there we go yeah which uh fun um, fact for the viewers uh she is the aunt of mamoru from bn3 really yes so technically she is a part of the the what eh, i guess it makes sense she's 
the sister <clears throat> of uh, the owner of the inn of that game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so it's neat that she has that little shop near it. I just like her design. Like, they're they're taking the the like uh, kimono thing that you would wear when you go to hot springs or when you go to festivals, and they're changing it and subverting it to be more. I don't know. Uh, midriffs are cool. Fuck you. I don't have any more than that. Sorry. Um, the dub sure does uh, try to make fun of kimonos for some fucking reason. Of they course. do, yeah. Yeah, because anything not American culture is strange and weird. Um, one thing I noted was Rush is here as well and eager to jump into the hot springs and... and, and Russia's digital data made manifest. So how the fuck are you going to jump into water and not immediately short circuit? The fucked part is I forgot Russia was in this episode. Yeah, I, I, I rewatched that episode last night and I forgot he was there. The Bubble Man shenanigans had me in such a dissociative state that I was like, <laughs> my fucking God, maybe bio has a point in life. Oh, he's, man. he's a running gag of hating Bubble Man on the podcast. Anyway, um, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree. Bubble Man fucking sucks. He's the worst like enemy yeah. character. Yeah, but I'd rather um, have like Bubble Man showed up at the start of this episode. I was like, oh, this is gonna be torture. Yeah, but, but then, yeah. then you know, a fucking baddie showed up with an actually neat looking fucking uh, net navy, and I was like, okay. Well, right. we get we get two baddies, right? We get her, and then we also get to see Miss Mari in a kimono. Which I don't give a shit it, about, Miss Mari. I'll fight you. <laughs> Call me Higsby. I'll fucking fight you right now. <laughs> yeah, and like Higsby, I'll just fucking blow a little bit of air your way and knock you over like the twig you are. Ooh. We'll get to that episode. That episode pissed me off, but um, I'm ignoring your, <laughs> your pointed comment. Anyways, so um, <clears throat> now before they can actually get in the hot springs, and that, that this is why this is not an actual hot spring episode. They have like this cultural thing that they have to do where they have to drink water and determine which glass of water is the hot spring water versus like tap water, right? That, that's an actual thing? No, I okay. have been to okay. at least 15 hot springs here. I have never heard of this. This is not a thing in any capacity. I tried to Google it and find out if this was a thing at like a very specific this, hot spring. Couldn't find it. I, I, I don't I assumed, know what this is. I assumed <coughs> that this was a dubism thing because like that, that didn't look like hot spring water to me. I figured, okay, it's a bunch of glasses of milk because... That's a thing with Japanese onsen. You drink milk after you get out of the onsen for some fucking reason. Correct. Yeah. That it, it, um, it's like, yeah. I don't understand why. And that's what I figured that this was like a fucking dubism for. They decided, oh no, let's make that hot spring water for some ungodly reason. But I, I don't know. Maybe it's it was water shit. in the original too. Oh no, I was watching a Japanese version. It's, it's just fucking... The it, it's water. weird. Yeah, it's just weird. So it and, is, and it's it's onsen water in the fucking Japanese too. Yep. So I I will say this. I will say this. Okay. When you go to use the onsen, right? There is uh, a thing that you you do. You don't have to, but you typically you you bathe yourself in the showers next to the onsen, right? To clean yeah, you your get body. Clean before you go. You get sorry. clean. Then you go into the onsen, and then when you get out of the onsen, there's a small like basin of onsen water with a little bucket that you can use that you you know use to wash the onsen water off right it's kind of like a, a final like you know because sometimes onsens have like herbs or whatever in in the mix to help you relax or smell good or whatever and so you want to get it off and some people i have seen some people drink from them but i've never heard of like you must drink this water to honor the culture of some like that's not a thing so, I don't know. Anyways, so they, they drink the hot spring water and they fucking fail to recognize which one is hot spring water. I don't know. Um, and then Lan gets challenged to a net battle by Tamako, and Tamako's uh, persona is Heavy Metal Man. Who's actually a person? Uh, I forgot that was his dub name. Yep. Go ahead. What's his Japanese name? 
Metal Man. Yeah. Heavy Metal Man. Heavy Metal Man. Um, the name is lame, but he is cool. Like, the design is cool. Oh, yeah, um, no, Metal Man fucks. Yeah. And uh, what happens is Metal Man and, and Mega Man duel. Uh, Mega Man rides one of the spinning saw blades as a surfboard. <clears throat> yeah, and gets I got knocked that off image of it. Right. Defies physics to do it, to, by the way. Mm -hmm. He should mm -hmm. be spinning if he's doing that. Well, I mean, let's. Yeah, yeah, he's just standing stock still on a spinning blade. That That's fucking great. The shit that gets uh, me is like a second after Metal Man just yanks it out and he just falls from it and puts it back on his back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> How long is your um, arm, dude? But but while we're watching this like ridiculous fight happen, uh Bubble Man shows up and in the dub he says things like snap, crackle, and glob. What does that even mean with regards to bubbles? That is a serial thing. Like this <laughs> <laughs> uh, has gone straight for the snap snap crackle pop. Because yeah. bubbles pop. Pop. But, yeah. Uh, but they had no, the fucking... He says glob. But because they gave him the fucking, like, in the games, he has the speech thing where he goes glub. And it's like, why? In the... So, I hate Bubble Man a lot. I hate him <laughs> a sucks. lot. So I hate Bubble Man EXE so much. I'm going to save us all a bunch of time because the next 10 to 15 minutes of this episode are Tomiko shows up, challenges land to a net battle, they're equally matched. Which is Bubble bullshit. Man tries to interfere, which is bullshit, but we'll get to that in a minute. Bubble Man tries to interfere and ends up either blowing himself up via bubble bombs, which doesn't work. Uh, the second time he he dresses up as Rush and then tries to blow up Mega Man with a bomb bone, which, yeah, thank you for that image it's fucking garbage i hate, I hate it's bad so much it's so bad uh but the bomb bone gets knocked back at bubble man so blows himself up again uh and then just some other time like the next two or three times it doesn't even matter because they're all like five seconds long it, it doesn't take much at all the more funny and interesting part is tamako has the ability to meld her body into various objects in order to find and challenge land to a net battle. So yeah. uh, the, the first time she appears in the closet, which I think is great. Uh, I wish I wish some, I wish she would appear in my closet. That would anyways. Uh, but then she can appear in the hollowed out part of a tree, which I don't know if you have the image ready, Yuki, but I, I put it in chat or in a Discord yeah, rather. I'll just go ahead and save that. So she can appear in the hollowed out part of a tree, like like a fucking squirrel or whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing the face. It's so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> it's... Oh, God. Now I want to edit the uh, Life Has Many Doors from Edit Daddy. Oh, and just put her that's face a good there. one. That's a good one. Um... And then the next one is she appears in inside of Land's rice bowl <laughs> somehow. <laughs> like like Land un Land has a bowl of rice, and how rice is served to you in the traditional manner is you get a bowl of rice, and then there's a lid on top of it, right? <laughs> and she, Land removes the rice bowl <laughs> lid, and Tama goes like, "Net battle me now, nerd." <laughs> The Tomiko everywhere system. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but anyways, yeah, so Lan goes through all of that nonsense. Um and every time Bubble Man fails, he causes damage to the real world because he's blowing himself up, which causes water to like explode out of faucets or washing machines or whatever. Uh, because that's how it works when you fuck up something in the digital world. Uh, and then the final battle, 
happens when Lan decides at like two in the morning, hey, I'm going to go use the hot springs finally because nobody can make me drink its like gross water or whatever. So he's Lan is naked with a towel. He goes to the hot springs and Tamako is there perched on a rock like a fucking guardian of the night and challenges Lan to a net battle. Um, and so Lan and Metal Man fight. And, and again, I have to stress, you have a grown ass woman challenging a child who is naked with a towel around his waist to a net battle at three in the morning. This is really weird. Um, it's fine. Lan, Just don't Lan call uses. Cops. Yeah. Don't call the cops. Lan uses uh in the dub. It's called mega blast, but I mean, it's a fucking mega cannon. Come on now. Yeah. It's one of the few um, times where uh, it's animated without 3D and it looks really good. It does. All the all the animations, there was a boomerang animation this this uh, episode that looked really sick. Yeah, that shit was also traditionally drawn and that shit looks really nice. Yeah. Um and and we're going to get to budget here in one of these episodes cuz there was something that just I I think I put the image of like those three uh, like Land Mail and uh, Chi Sao looking real fucking stupid. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was this episode. <clears throat> yeah. So all the budget went to the cool, fancy animations and not the rest of the show. Um, but, anyways, so they're battling, and I don't know where Lan is getting these battle chips because, again, he's just wearing a towel, but he's able to produce battle chips somehow. And then Bubble Man attacks yet again. Now, this time, Bubble Man has uh, increased his size somehow, no, and has not. yeah, as you do. Uh, and he has also coated his entire body with bubbles that regenerate when you pop them. So it's like a bunch of tiny bubbles that form one big bubble shield. And let me read my notes exactly. Uh, bubble Man dot 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 has turned into a giant and has completely covered himself in soap bubbles. And God, this guy is fucking stupid. I hate him and I hate this show. And I want to just and I can't say that on uh, on stream. <clears throat> so, um, oh, that that's the shit that can't be said on stream, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All all the slurs are fine, but uh, can't 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 talk about that. No. Um, <laughs> Mega Man tries to pop the bubbles. He can't. Metal Man does pop the bubbles, but this pisses Bubble Man off, and he activates a dimensional area field. And we've completely gone like we've completely gotten rid of the pretense that we need to launch these fucking things from satellites or whatever. Now they literally just spawn from objects. Yeah, don't like, worry about it. There's a cutscene where one of the lion heads that allow water to seep into the onsen, uh, one of those things just phase through like a fucking ghost. So, fuck me, I guess. Any scientific pretense is just out the window. Now, fuck it. Just D area. Um, Bubble Man comes into the real world. Uh... Lan and Mega Man cross fuse. Bubble Man blows them up and he says in the dub, I boomed them both. I boomed them both. Yay. I fucking hate this guy so bad. Uh, He's worse Um, than the dub. Jesus Christ. He's so bad. Uh, Mega Man uh, and Lan brought this character back for the fucking sixth Battle Network games. Because if I remember correctly, isn't yeah, Bubble Man's inside <clears throat> East Gregor and Falzar, isn't he? You're thinking of yes. one of the version exclusive navvies. You're thinking of oh, Aqu- no, you're thinking no, of Scott Man. Aqu- uh, Aquaman. Oh, no. oh. Or okay. Aquaman. Yeah. Uh, there's, sorry, there's I call- too many of it's, these fucking archetype. It's it's like spout uh mode. What's it called when you fuse into something in six? Cross. Spout cross, okay. Yeah. It's fine. He got his original name back as fuck Spout Man. That never existed. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. He tried to blow up Mega Man and Lan. Obviously, that didn't happen. And so it, this is how the episode ends. Lan and, and Mega Man don't even like it, maybe I missed it, but they don't even load a chip. No, he they just don't. dies to <laughs> Yeah, he just dies to a charge shot. The shit That's how that, fucking lame this guy the is. The shit that gets me is Lan just fucking blows up his uh his like little emblem, which mm-hmm. 
because of future seasons and future episodes, uh, that should permanently delete Bubble Man. But it doesn't. No. God, I wish. But that's episode five. Um, the Sorry, the ending is Lan and the gang try to get back on the train. As the train doors open, Tamako's there. Uh, stanced the fuck out, pussy exposed to the world, saying, Lan, battle me. And then they go off and have another battle. That's episode five. That episode sucked. I didn't like it. It had an interesting character, and it was completely ruined and overshadowed by the fact that they brought back one of the worst fucking characters in the series. It's fine. We didn't get Metal Soul. She'll be back. That's true. Wait, will she? Are you actually saying like she will be back? It, it, it's based on BN4, and Metal Man's a soul unison. He's gonna be back. Oh. Good, good. Okay, good. <laughs> um, okay, episode six. Um, I believe the episode title is Watch This Cuck Loser Fail at Sports in Front of a Girl He Likes. I don't think that's the episode name. Really? What's the episode name? I don't know. I think, I think that's how you, how you translate uh, Multimo Kiken uh, Kyugi. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I think, think it's... translation for that, right? I'm pretty sure yeah. it's Beta Cuck Camp Bowl. Ah, uh, uh, Japanese is a very nuanced language, yeah. and transla- translating it to English yeah, is... Yeah, you know, the uh, fucking... The same words for a dangerous <clears throat> bowling game mean da- mean beta cuck. So, like, yeah. fucking... You know. Localization is, is a very difficult thing to do, but we try here. <laughs> we're, we're very high-quality <laughs> podcast hosts. Um, I'm gonna add a note to Double Soul real quick that just says Multimo Kiken. No, don't. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so episode six starts with uh, there's this new digital bowling alley uh, where you wear a glove and it spawns a digital ball. And then you use that ball and it tracks your movements to help you strike digital pins. So it's like Wii Bowling, but it's l- like more futuristic, I guess. Um and there's this gotcha. It's so popular that there's a gotcha game to win tickets to go play. Now, Higsby is in line, but Higsby is not there for the bowling tickets. He's there for the rare chips that are also included in the prize pool. However, Wait, is, is that what's in the dub? Yeah. In the Japanese version, it's soy sauce. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> when he wins, he goes, No! I wanted the soy sauce! I just ran out! <laughs> that is way better than him going after some, like, unnamed battle chips. Because <laughs> he's oh, literally like, game. No, I wanted I wanted the battle chips, the rare chips. I, li- I like the soy sauce thing. That's funnier. Um, but anyways, yeah, so now... I, I gotta I gotta read this word for word, okay. So he wins the bowling tickets, Higsby doesn't like it, right? <clears throat> and the guy who gave him the ticket says, Why are you sad? You can take your girlfriend. You know, the one you like but who doesn't know you exist, and then he starts laughing. That is actually in the yeah, dub. like what the fuck happened there? Holy dude? shit. Like dude this just random hit on Higsby. <laughs> Yeah, this random no name NPC is just like fuck Higsby. I'm gonna make fun of him to his man, face. It, it's a lot meaner than the Japanese version. That's just oh, you can just take your girlfriend, man. I'm sure she'll love it. It's really on the rage right now. <laughs> That's it. People don't like Higsby in the American version. That's funny. Um, okay, I don't think so people like Higsby in the games. Well, I mean, I, I think number. I think Number Man's okay. I mean, Number Man's a good design. It's just Higsby yeah. exists. Yeah, he he exi- He's the chip shop guy. He sells me battle chips. That's all I care about. Um, anyways, so Higsby realizes that he can, like, he thinks that he can impress Miss Mari with his wee bowling skills. Um, and as he's like practicing his wind up or whatever, he cracks his back because he is, you know a nerd who has never lifted anything heavier than a PET in his life. Um, so he goes to Lan's school to find Miss Mari to ask her out. And he meets up with Lan and male, uh, who they're on his case. They're like, Oh, what's you going to ask Miss Mari out? I didn't know you liked her like that. Well, yeah, sure. I think it'll be great that you two get together or whatever. 
And then Higsby says that he's ready to go on the date, but he forgot to ask her out because, you know, he's a loser. Yep. Um, so Miss Mari pops up and Higsby is completely unable to speak his mind and say, hey, please go to this bowling alley with me or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it, eventually Lan has to step in and ask Miss Mari for him. Now, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> the funny thing is, right, if Higsby had just asked Miss Mari, Miss Mari probably would have either said yes or no or whatever. But by virtue of having Lan ask on behalf of Miss Higsby, uh, B- Miss Higsby? Higsby. That's what he wants. Miss, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Miss Mari assumes that Higsby and wants to take all of them out to bowling. So now it's no longer just a date. It's a friendly date with it's school a, children. It's a group of that. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, they go bowling. Now. We're cu- we cut away and we're introduced to the villain of the episode, Bowl Man. And if you're or playing, uh, and if you're playing uh, Access White, it's Miss Man. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I need to stress that as much as I hate Bubble Man and I still think Bubble Man is the worst character, I think Bowl Man might have the dumbest design. Oh yeah, uh, fucking yeah. the color scheme, the design. It's <clears> like I want to give it props for being a coherent bowling-looking character, I guess. But also, the colors are fucking terrible. Why is he Christmas colored? No, you know. I guess my I guess my issue with the design is he's got bowling balls for arms and legs, but his attack is he has a bowling pin on his back that turns into a cannon. Like yeah, and the cannon launches tiny bowling pins that act as homing missiles, but he can also summon a giant bowling ball. And it's just like, okay, I get it. You want to make your theme around bowling. That's fine. What the fuck is this? <coughs> but anyways, Bowman at first is not a villain. He just wants to bowl. And then, uh, shade man basically gives him, you know, a dark chip. Uh, and then with the dark chip, he becomes very aggressive in his bowling. Now, in the dub, after he gets dark chipped, oh, now but, I now I know why Bowl Man kind of sucks. He's a what? he's a fan design. Oh, really? Yep. Let me just go ahead and uh, slap this fucking web page. Webp is such it's a shit. Turn out format. that we're shit talking a fucking like child's character. Oh yeah, no, we definitely Good. are. Good. I hope that child realizes the errors of his mistakes. Oh my god. I hope he doesn't design another character ever again. It was the contest winner. Yeah. Oh, fucker. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Five year old who's now actually an adult and has a job. I don't. I don't actually mean any of that. I'm just being funny. Oh, boy. Okay, wait. So in the design document there, originally his other arm was design the bowling pin cannon. <laughs> I actually sorry. don't hate that. I don't hate his arm being the cannon, like, always. Yeah, if the arm was the cannon and it fired bowling balls, that would make sense to me. But it's not. And also, you called it a design document. <laughs> This is a design document. <laughs> I know it is. I can't make fun of it. I can't draw for shit. If you, I just like, can't. I, I can't get over the fucking like the notes. It just says he loves bowling. <coughs> he loves bowling. <coughs> <coughs> okay. So, in the dub, as he's getting dark chipped, Bowl Man says, "Woe be to anyone who stands in my way." And I'm like, you can't give that line to Bowl Man. You look like a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's talking like Sephiroth for no reason. Cloud. Um, we're going to go bold. Oh, Cloud, you're like a lost puppy. Take this bowling pin. He gets a strike. I won't be a memory. 
<laughs> oh, it's your cousin. We're going bowling. Actually, my not Navi bowl. <laughs> actually, Sephiroth is pretty good at bowling. Have you seen the way he launches Materia Cloud? Just fucking that, launches. Yeah, that's true. It. All right. Oh. Um, we cut back to Lan and the gang. They're bowling, and here's the sequence of events. Right, Lan goes first. Lan gets a strike. Mail goes second. Mail gets a strike. Miss Mari goes third. Miss Mari gets a strike. And then all eyes go to Higsby, who has realized that he has never touched a bowling ball in his life. So he tries, he, yeah, he tries to like weasel his way out of it, right? He says, like, oh, I didn't bring my bowling glove, right? Because they have to use these like power glove looking things to bowl to spawn the digital balls. And Miss Mari says, oh, it's okay. I got you one and gives it to him by putting it in the palm of his hand. And this glove is apparently so heavy that Higsby can barely lift it up. Which it's doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Digital and then bowling ball. <laughs> when he spawns a bowling ball, again, it is a digital bowling ball. It doesn't actually exist. It's too heavy for him to bowl appropriately. So he falls to the fucking floor. Yeah, you know. Higsby sucks. But Number Man has a plan to hack the planet and make it to where no matter what Higsby does, he will always bowl a strike. So, just to clarify, this is the scenario. Higsby is getting cucked at bowling in front of his crush by both Lan and Male, who I need to remind everybody are children. And so he has to resort to cheating just to stay with it, just to keep up. He throws his first ball. It strikes because Number Man cheated. And his immediate response, I don't know what it said in the in the JP version, but in the dub, he screams. Oh no, I can't do anything right. I knocked them all down. I think in the Japanese version, he's just playing it off as confident. I, I don't... I, I think it's... That's a, at least funny. It's funny, I agree. But I don't know how you write for a character this lame. Like, that's incredible. It's good. It's good writing that part, but it's just, it's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I mean, to be fair, Higsby's like dub voice actor really sells that fucking loser energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like that that, I that cannot... is a perfect voice for, for that, that kind of character. Yeah. Like, I could not imagine summoning whatever voice is necessary to make it work, but that, that voice actor absolutely does. It's one of the Ed and Eddie boys, isn't it? Mm. Double D. Uh, no, that's Number Man. Oh, that's Number Man. Okay. <clears throat> well, whoever voices him. But anyways. Um, okay, so he got a strike. Everybody's like cool with it, except Bowler Man is upset that he's detecting cheating at his noble sport or whatever. Um, and I need to point out that as all these balls from the gang are happening, Bowler Man is also practicing. And when he practices, he, you know, when he gets a strike, he also destroys a communications tower in the real world or you know uh fractures a building or you know it just causes widespread destruction because bowling i guess yeah you know <clears throat> number one cause um, for shit to go wrong yeah so everybody's so impressed with higsby's strikes that miss mari high fives higsby and he immediately gets a boner like he's like i'm never washing this hand ever again um He's just so happy. And then number man gets, I believe attacked by bowler man and notifies Higsby that something's wrong and number man or sorry, Higsby says, no number man, I need you to help me cheat and land and mail overhear this and realize that Higsby has been cheating, but they decide to send in mega man and roll to help out and save number man. So, um, I forget who says it, but somebody says I put in my notes a Dark Lloyd. So in this in the dub, they're calling 
these bad guys, dark Lloyds. I don't know if I don't remember if that's it's, what they're called. In... It's also that in the Japanese version, but I don't know. I don't remember if he immediately calls him that. Okay. That, I, th- I yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, he does call him a dark Lloyd after he uses a dark chip, because I think at this point it's like, oh, well, this could just be a random ass Navi. Right. Okay. Uh, so anyways, yeah, number man is strapped to a bowling pin and uh, bull man says, how dare you cheat at this noble sport? That's a direct quote. Meanwhile, in the Japanese <clears throat> version, you who lacks of sportsmanship must pay for your sins with your life. And it goes incredibly fucking raw. Yeah, 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 that's 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 definitely way better. Um, and so then he starts bowling. And every time he knocks over a pin that isn't Number Man, Number Man says, you know, oh, I've only got a 10% chance to get hit. And then the next pin goes down. He's like, okay, now it's 20%. And then, you know, two pins go down. Oh, no, it's 50%. And it just keeps going like that until, you know, Mega Man saves him. Um, Bull Man says, and, and this, is, this is actually really good. He says, don't interfere in my business. And Mega Man says, my friends are my business. That's pretty raw. I like that. Um, but then they fight. And then Lan says, okay, time for double soul. And then I moaned a little bit because, you know, it's my and name. Of course it would. Yeah. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, Lan and Mega Man bust out Roll Soul, which looks pretty good still. Like, I yeah. like Roll Soul a lot. I think it's it's a good design. Unfortunately, you don't get to see it for very long because guess fucking what? D area spawns, so we got to break out a roll soul and cross fuse. Um, <clears throat> I will say this: so when they're in the real world, and Mega Man and Bull Man have cross fused, uh, Bowler Man or Bull Man or whatever his name is has way, way, way more attack variety than Bubble Man, like a lot. There's he summons the giant bowling ball attack, right? Mm-hmm. He uh, busts out his bowling pin cannon, which launches heat, you know, seeker missiles. Uh, he, I think, just straight up throws bowling ball bombs at one point. Uh, and then his final attack is he summons the big bowling ball again, but this time he like makes it expand, but not in like a sexy way. He just keeps making it bigger, like a spirit bomb. Uh, but before he can actually like, you know, blow it up or whatever, uh, land loads step sword or loaded step sword rather land cheated. Use, land cheated. He did. We, we didn't he, see him load his we chips. We didn't see him load his chips. Cause <laughs> in my thread, I posted uh, the picture of the breaking bad dude of the car. Like, <laughs> yeah. Land, land, no, you didn't slot in any chips beforehand. You're stuck using the buster land. Land, no land. Where's your chips? But it doesn't matter because he has step sword, so he uses step sword to finish him. Uh, I yeah, I even put in my notes which uh, step sword to finish him off. Which, by the way, I noticed they stopped giving a shit about land loading B chips in before cross views. Len has finally broken the curse. He is no longer yeah. doing <clears throat> area steel wide sword. He finally learned. For He's now for, using for, step sword. For, for two episodes. For two, for two episodes. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. But yeah, that's episode six, the, the bowling episode. What what'd y'all think of that episode? Oh god, I forgot this fucking edit. It Let sure me put was this. an episode, dude. <laughs> like ugh. See, the more I the more I look at this design doc for Bowl Man, I love the original design where he's got the cannon. That is cool. Like attached to his arm instead of having it as like a sword thing that he equips and unequips yeah because i think it is just in the games that is just a cannon like he doesn't have that extra arm at least in the battle sprite let me double check uh Oh, yeah, it is just a cannon stuck in his arm. Yeah, it, it, he doesn't oh, have that, I'm, he doesn't have that extra I'm, one. I'm just now noticing your image friendship ended with Area Steel and Quite Sword. Now Step Sword is my best friend. 
Okay. So that was episode six. <clears throat> um, episode seven, anybody? Episode seven is my favorite of the bunch for obvious reasons, but, uh, you know. Huh. Yeah, I guess the, anim- the anime is the only time Ballman uses, uh, like, he uses the cannon like to strap it onto his arm. I guess Interesting. So. Yeah, the in-game sprite doesn't have that. His battle chip art doesn't have that. Wait, no, I'm a fucking liar. His battle chip art does have it. Anyway, fuck ball, man. Episode 7. Episode 7. Okay. Episode starts with uh, an old friend on a train. Mr. Match. He's back in town, baby. I'm gonna fuck him. He's got me too. He's got a. I, I even put in my notes. I said I really want his jacket. Like his jacket is. It, cool. it goes really hard. Like his outfit. He's got drip. It's great. Um. So he's back in town and he's riding a train, but the train stops. Oh, he's gonna be riding weird... a train, all right. Fuck you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> caught me. You caught me completely off guard. Um. <clears throat> So he's riding, he's riding public service, <laughs> and <laughs> oh, shut it's up. gonna be public service. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, and the the train screens are getting covered in these like digital vines, which stop the train. So he, you know, forces open the bay doors and jumps down to find a terminal to load in a uh, heat man. Now. While this is going on, we cut over to Lan, who's reading comic books uh, instead of doing his homework. I don't know what the JP says, but dub. Oh, is it? Okay. Because the dub, Megman's like, hey, you should do your homework. And Lan's like, I uh, like to warm up my brain with comic books before I do homework. Okay, then it's slightly different because in the Japanese version, he was already doing it, but he took a break. Oh, okay. Uh, Well, when we cut to Lan watching the TV, that's when he says he's going to take a break. And then Mega Man says, but you haven't even started yet. And I'm I, in this instance, I, I identify with land because yeah, man, I get it. <laughs> Fuck homework. Um, but anyways, so vines are showing up everywhere. Uh, land's mom is at the bank and can't withdraw money because vines have taken over the ATMs. Mayo is trying to do homework at the library and can't because the library computers have been taken over with vines and it's, becoming news <clears throat> so land sees the news on the tv he's like oh wow what's going on there and then i think he gets a call from mr famous and mr famous tells him to go do his job um and and the bit with mr famous by the way from now on is uh land says oh hey mr famous and famous says it's just famous now shut up here's your mission and okay they that's s- it they slightly changed the oh done yeah um so, Lan goes to the uh, crap. What is it? He he went to some place. I think it was the ATM. I didn't write it in my notes, but uh, he went to a location that was being overrun with with vines. He and Lan tells an adult to fuck out of the way because he's a cop and shows him his badge, and then Lan jacks into the internet. And he sees the giant vine plant, uh, and he also sees like these mole things that I've never seen before. I, I feel like I've seen them, but I just don't remember where they're from. Yeah, the mole virus. Are those what the mole virus looked like? I don't. I genuinely don't remember. Eh, huh. but we'll, we'll we'll go with fifty fifty. Okay. Uh, the viruses shown up in this episode listed are Mamogra and Canadum two. Okay, yeah, so the mole so, virus. Yeah, those are the mole viruses. Okay. That, I just have shitty memory. Um, but anyways, uh, they all jump Mega Man. Mega Man uses a charge shot to kill literally all of them in one blast. Uh, and then Mega Man gets uh, attacked by vines. And I remember saying, oh, hey, I think I've seen this Dodinchi before. It's uh, no. Because, yeah, no, he's he's grabbed by vines. You know, it's wrapped around his waist and, and legs and... Anyways, so the villain of this episode is Vine Man. Fuck you, Plant Man. Yeah. And and he sucks too, but at least, you know, he's got a consistent like design. Yeah. Um, 
But anyways, Mega Man's about to die, and then who should show up? But guess what? It's Heat Man. Heat Man's back. Mr. Match is here. It's great, right? Um, This is where I noticed that Vine Man, or sorry, Plant Man, uh, has a womb tattoo. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the no, fuck up. No, he does. And then I thought, oh, wow. So this must be where Yuki got his VTuber Plant idea Man. from. Uh, yes, Ah, oh, his emblem is there. I hate you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, it's you. It's your net, Navi. Not gay enough. <laughs> oh, okay. You can't. You can't tell me Vine Man isn't fucking gay. Come on. Look yeah, at him. Not gay enough. <laughs> what? You know what? I agree with you. I agree with you, Yuki. Okay. All right. Plant Man is cool. Plant Man is neat and is fairly gay, but like. This motherfucker's not even close to Karama gay, and they have the same fucking aesthetic choice. Okay, yeah. let me be clear. It's really difficult to approach Karama gay in any capacity. I need right? that motherfucker in me. But two, um, his whole gimmick is like vines. Come on, are you kidding me? Vines to grab the tiny waist with and to, his to gimmick do the thing? His gimmick is fucking like roses and thorn vines. Which are the same fucking aesthetic gimmick that Karama has in Yu Yu Hakusho. He should be holding himself to at least Karama gay minimum. But right, but you, but Yu Yu Hakusho was created by like a level 11 horny designer. And Mega Man is created by like a team of like level 5 horny designers. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's not level 5 up. horny designer that's animated by people with a level 10 horny. So. I guess somewhere it should balance out. Uh, so, um, I lost my place. Oh yeah, so Heat Man is actually getting his ass beat by Vine Man, which really shouldn't happen. Like, like Heat Man, like he <laughs> should be I, burning I, this motherfucker. I should. I need to stress in every instance of the Mega Man Battle Network games or media, even in past episodes. Heat man, or sorry, fire element always beats plant element. That's just how it works. So I don't understand what's happening here, but heat man is getting chumped for no reason. I will say this though. There was this instance where heat man got his ass beat, right? And then he like activates his persona and you see a cutaway of torch man. That yeah. was raw. That was so fucking raw. Like it happened for a fraction of a second, but it was so cool. Um, but, uh, Vine Man runs away for some reason. Mr. Match takes Lan back to the curry shop, which has been shut down, which sucks. Uh, and then Mr. Famous show, the rent. they couldn't pay the rent. I don't understand how they're the most popular curry shop in Dintec city. Things change, uh, man. Yeah, shit that's happens. Fucked up. Yahoo. That's... Yahoo got caught diddling the curry sauce. Don't, mm, mm, uh -oh. I don't, uh -oh. I don't, <laughs> Okay, I need to stress that I was going to go get curry this weekend, and now I kind of don't, because now I've got this mental image of somebody sticking their dick in curry. Like, Oh, don't... no, it wasn't his dick, it was his balls. <laughs> it was those magic man balls. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. Somehow it becomes worse when it's like the balls and not the dick. Yeah! <laughs> it's demoralizing. Anyways... Mr. Famous shows up with gear to repair Heat Man, who was damaged pretty badly. Uh, Mr. Match is really cool now. He's like, you go ahead, Lan. I can't do his voice, but uh, you go ahead, Lan. I'll catch up as soon as Heat Man's repaired. Um, and as Mr. Famous is like trying to repair and defrag the data, that's when they realize that... Uh, Torchman and Heat Man... Torchman had been like living inside of Heat Man as like an alter like a persona basically or a stand or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And the Japanese version, they just straight up say like, Oh, Hey, yeah. He, his data was never deleted. So he's just there. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it was in the dub. Yeah. Um, we cut to vine man in front of shade man saying, give me a dark chip and shade man says, okay. And then when vine man gets dark chipped, he moans really loudly. Like, like, 
I, I okay, I make jokes on this show about like sexual stuff all the time because haha funny penis. But I'm 100% serious when I say he moaned in the most sexual way I've heard and I hated it. I believe it in the dub. Like it was really uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, so Mega Man uh, goes to rescue Roll, who had been captured by Vine Man at this point. Uh, Mega Man's getting his ass kicked, and then guess who shows up? It's Torch Man. He's back. Really cool. Um, Lan activates double sword. He's using like um long sword and I think wide sword. It's hard to tell because the dub version has him still swinging around dildos. Cause you know, can't show sharp objects for some reason. Got a, you know, got that four kids mandate still. Yeah. Did I think you... it is just Did... double long sword. Cause he's been, he's been using that a lot. Like mm-hmm. this season so far. I noticed that the, uh, the 3d model for like, okay. When he's, when the sword is fucking appearing on his arm, the 3d model has a weird, like really thick black outline to it now. Yeah. yeah. It's really kind of awkward to look at. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and it makes it when when we change to, to the dildo bats, it makes it really just strange because in animation, the dildo bats are like blurry almost. There's no outline. Oh, it gets worse when we start using bar sword because that shit's just fucking cheese. Great. Awesome. Um, so dildo sword isn't working. Uh, Mega Man uses yo-yo. That also didn't work. Uh, and then Mega Man uses Lava Cannon, and that would have worked, but Dark Chip makes Vine Man stronger, I guess. Uh, I liked the Lava Cannon animation. I thought that looked really cool. Um, but then Torch Man shows up in the dub. He says things like, I always preferred my vegetables roasted, which is good. I liked it. Um and then we get the Japanese his like the line is essentially just I told you I'd come after you or something of that nature it was it was like oh, that's I told gay you I'd be back or something yeah it's I a told, good line I, I told you I'd be back um we we do get that image I don't know if you caught if you caught it I didn't get it I wanted to go back and get it uh where Torchman is helping Mega Man get up and he's holding him very sensually oh yeah and... no I got it I got it I got it okay yeah I yeah, put it up because that's Yowie. Oh, I'm no, sorry. That is 100% Yowie, yeah. That is 100% Yowie. <laughs> like, like, that is, that is so good. Because uh, Torchman is holding Mega Man while a wall of vines start to close in on them. And it's just... It's so good. Um, yeah, while, while screaming, getting... there's nothing that I know we yeah. can burn. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's Yowie. He got his head in his chest and everything. Um, So the vines close in and Vine Man is doing his little speech about like, oh man, it's going to be boring when I've defeated everybody because then I'll have nobody to fight. But oh well, that's just how it goes, I guess. Um, And then the vines burn away and we get our first shot of the new double soul, Torch Soul. And it looks great. It really is my favorite. Sick. It is my it's favorite double soul. Yeah, it's it's my favorite double soul not named Napalm Soul. Uh it's really good. Um so right, yeah, let they... me go ahead and look through the official complete works to ruin Fire Soul for you. <sighs> Do you really got it? Can you not just let me enjoy something? Nah. This is funny. You're a bitch. Yeah. Um Okay, but yeah, that's basically the end of the episode. They double lava cannon and uh, blow up Vine Soul, or Vine Soul, uh, Vine Man. They don't kill him because you get the log out message, so he runs away. Which means yeah, we'll... they can't kill off any of the Dark Lords yet. They want to use them in more episodes and for the uh, yep. shit. Oh yeah, yep. no, he's just dead. Th- this <laughs> is the last episode we see Vine Man. <laughs> in the uh, did they add the whole log out shit in? In the English version? Because he just fucking dies. No, in oh. the English version, it's logging out, yeah. In the Japanese version, he just fu- he's just dead. Well, that's good. <laughs> Odd also, choice, considering we don't even get to see his fucking net op yet. I really don't like the idea of, like, a peeled Mega Man arm fitting into a rubber fire soul sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> 
why would you show me this? Uh, fuck you. <laughs> All right, you yeah. want to you want to see Mega Man's head without the fire? Very funny. No, really don't. You All don't right, cool. Then do, do it. You know, I could just close the stream. I'm doing this to myself. I'll put it into the Discord. You're such a bitch, actually. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, fire soul with no rejected. fire. Uh, oh my god. It's just his normal ass helmet under there. <laughs> Dude looks like a bowling ball. <laughs> He's so dumb. Okay. So that's episode seven. That was a good episode. I, I liked this episode the most, not just because I really like Torchman and Heatman and Mr. Match, but the flow of the episode was a lot better than the previous ones because we got some setup, we got some payoff, we got a new, you know, double soul. Uh, and we even got some like external lore, like the curry shop being closed down, Mr. Match having been, you know, gone for some reason, that sort of thing. Uh, Mr. Match owing a favor to Mr. Famous now as a result of Mr. Famous helping to rebuild Torchman. Yeah, th this was just a really good episode. Yeah, there's there's nothing offensively bad about this episode, for me at least. Now the yep. next episode, I might have yeah. dissociated through the next episode. Uh, let me get yeah. Let me put up Beta Fire Soul real quick. Why though? It's not that bad. Oh, it's not? Okay. Well, while, while Yuki's working on that, yeah, the next yeah, episode you're right. recovering is uh, Kagami no y Naka no Yujo. Okay, I fuck Friendship with that design. In the mirror. I like that design. That's a, that's a good Fire Soul design, actually. That's alright, yeah. Yeah. It's not as good as what we got, but it's alright. Yeah. Well, when we get to Guts, <laughs> when we get to Guts, I'm sure that fucking funny as hell one. So you said now, sure. You said friendship in the mirror, which I believe is the yep. the English translated yeah. version. Um, Kagami no naka no yujo, which doesn't make sense in English, right? Like at all, I guess. Um, so I don't know why they went with that, but it's it's a weird title. I would have gone with like friends reflected in the mirror or something but I yeah 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 it's still not or, a good adaptation of the japanese title right so um the episode opens with uh male and um oh shit you got this you got this iceman's operator Toru. Sure, I'm never gonna remember his name. I'm sorry. Because he's a fucking loser. <laughs> like, let me let me read the notes to you that I put. Every time I see Iceman's operator, he looks like he's a background character in early 2000s anime. Oh wait, like <laughs> I, I never remember his name, but the anime seems to think that I should think of him as much as I think of Male or Dex. Which, by the way, we haven't seen Dex in a couple episodes. I just we'll realized get there that. when we get there. Yeah, okay. Uh, so anyways... Can I, just, can I, oh, can go I ahead. give this episode one thing, at least, and I guess the last episodes? Yeah, sure. This set of episodes is at least give me, giving me one good thing, and that's, uh, I get to keep seeing Shade Man serving cunt. That's true. True. That is true. You are 100% correct. Like, we haven't mentioned Shade Man at all, but he yeah. is here. <laughs> he is queer, and he is serving. He is My the... man's on his chair the entire time just telling people what to do. <laughs> he is the f that the prophecy foretold. True! <laughs> I don't have Net to censor Navi. that one. <laughs> Net Navi Count Dracula, <laughs> movie serving cunt. I almost said Count Chocula. I don't know what's wrong with Count me. Chocula. Anyways. Um, okay, Count so... Chocula EXE. Someone, someone designed that. <laughs> If I could draw, I would. That'd be really funny, actually. He he like attacks by firing cereal balls and summoning milk hazards. <laughs> like milk tower. Oh wait, that's just cum. Actually, New that'd be bad. field type milk element. The cum element. Ugh. Anyways. Okay, so 
Uh, don't. Mm. <laughs> um. So, Mail and I, Iceman's operator. Uh, they're talking about something. It's not important. And off in the distance. Oh, right. Sorry. They wanted to go see a science museum. And Lan is off to the side doing uh sinking exercises. They call it the in in the dub. They call it the think, link, and get synced game. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? No, it's yeah. just it's just a friendship mini game in the Japanese version. Yeah, no, it's called the Think Link and Get Synced game. Where I'm gonna beat the shit out of the <laughs> people. <laughs> where, I'm gonna beat where, them with where bats. Lan, Lan asks a, a pretty simple question, like, "What's my favorite food?" And then Lan and Mega Man both answer in sync any type of curry and it's like okay charming but you don't have to give it a stupid ass name for it i don't know um so they're going to the science museum but lan is actually here on a secret mission for the net savers uh, to do a virus check because they received a rumor that the science museum was under going to be under attack however mr famous has stipulated some rules to lan number one you can't tell your friends about your mission and number two no free food and drinks because net savers can't afford it meanwhile in the japanese version mr famous has to bribe lan into doing this by offering him some ramen that would work on me to be honest i don't know so in the dub they're poor yeah in the, yeah in the dub the net savers have no funding Big, big secret service organization can't afford uh, food and drinks for some children. Yeah, just take, just take them to McDonald's. Easy. Well, no, McDonald's is being boycotted, so... Uh, take Burger. them to a place that isn't being boycotted. Yeah. Take them to Burger King. Yeah, take them to Burger King. God, I want Burger King. Anyways, so uh, Lan decides to jack in, but he has to do it secretly because he's on a secret mission, right? So you get like this underhanded jacking in animation uh, where he just shines the little LED light to the terminal, but like from the side. Um, but Mega Man jacks in and we get introduced to the character of the show. Uh, sorry, uh, of the episode rather named Techno. He's like a little informational data robot that teaches Lan and the gang about science stuff. Um, it doesn't appear that there's anything going on. There's no viruses. There's nothing going on. So Mega Man just says, okay, sector clear. And he starts patrolling somewhere else. Uh, I put, I hate techno and I hope he dies because I believe in the dub techno is using like science puns and it sucks, but I didn't write any of them down. So good. Fuck him. Yeah. Um, Lan and the gang make their way to this weird part of the science museum called the mirror section, which I had to think about it for a bit, but this actually does make sense. Um, there, there are a couple science museums here in Japan that do teach you about like light reflection and they have like a hall of mirrors to teach you about, you know, how light reflects off of surfaces and yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, but then techno shows up and he says something about like since the dawn of man mankind looked in the reflections in the water to see themselves or whatever and all i could think about was the persona like three final boss where he's like since the dawn of time man has sought the blah blah arcana yep spoilers if you haven't played a 20 year old game sorry yeah, that for some uh, reason Techno just pulled out the Justice Arcana for whatever fucking reason. Yeah. And then Koromaru showed up and he's wearing board shorts and a backwards cap. And he Dude, I would rather it. have fucking Koromaru than Rush. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. Um, but anyway, so we get this this explanation that uh, in Access in, in recent months, uh, Chod has not been around. Chod has vanished. And Ironically, as they're talking about Chod, we see a silhouette that looks very eerily similar to Chod in the rafters of the Science Museum like he's fucking Batman. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just a random dude that has <laughs> camo jeans. 
Yeah, how many people? By the way, why would you wear camo jeans if you're not like? Do you want to be seen or not? Like some oof. some people, unfortunately, view that aesthetic as interesting and neat, and it's not. Yeah, those people are losers. Sorry, Chad. Also, from a from a character design standpoint, you can view a character who wears camo as being a more serious type. Because it has the uh, express connotation of militant, military focused, uh, that uh, kind of person mm. is going to be more. It it fits into Shad's character design theory, is what I'm saying here. I didn't think about that, and you're 100 percent right. So okay, I retract my. It's still stupid, but at least I understand. No, no, I totally get from. it. Also, yeah. he's a child, and child children wear stupid shit. That's true. Yeah. But it does also, like, convey a specific type of person to you at first glance, and that's that's what good character design does. Yeah, I, I look and Let, I go, dipshit. Let's, let's, let's have a moment of honesty here. What, what stupid shit did y'all wear when you were kids? Close. Oh, God. Okay. I don't remember a lot of my outfits as a kid, because they were all chosen, you know, by family and stuff. Same. Um, I, I know my parents used to keep my fucking head, like buzz cut sh- fucking like hair short and i hated it mm. i had to i had that for a little bit too but that was after i um i went and got my hair bleached and i had the puka shell necklace and i went around saying stuff like dude and totally because this That's was the nineties. Like, holy shit, dude! <laughs> this was the this was the nineties, early two thousands. So yeah. you got to understand. F- fucking stop. <laughs> okay, yeah, shut the. Fuck What's wrong, bro? Like totally tubular, man. <laughs> oh my god! I I'm trying to be honest as as a friend. Here, Did you go crazy grinding it with the whippets. Like, yeah. <sighs> this, this can't be my legacy. You can't do this to me. I am a respectable adult. You sure, Nate bro? Hall man, double soul, activate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna throw up. He's doing the fucking hand sign. Oh, the, the what? <laughs> the pinky out, thumb out. Okay, okay. Yeah, the shaka bra. Yep. The, okay, the shaka is an actual thing from Hawaii where I lived, so y'all can stop. <laughs> okay, you can make fun of the hair and the stupid necklace, but you can't make fun of that. That's like a genuine thing. Shut Double, up. I have to ask you a genuine question. Yes. Are you white? <laughs> well... Why does mayonnaise, brother? What kind of dog is he? He's French. With... Oh, I forgot about my Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that just also answered the question. Fuck off. Okay, so... (sighs) Moving on. Um, I'm just gonna add a note to your profile real quick. You're... Uh, you're Hawaiian white boy. (sighs) My family was military. What do you want from me? Uh, I'm not judging. I just find it funny. Hate you. I love you, but I also I also hate you. Anyways. So, uh, they're in the mirror section, and Mega Man makes to the mirror section in the digital world. And guess who shows up? It's Savage Man. He's back for round two or three now. I think it's round three. Um... And but but this time Savage Man is using the mirrors, so he's creating these images that Mega Man can't distinguish from. And I put in my notes that this mirror fight is just the Haku fight from Naruto season one, because that's kind of what it is. Like Mega Man keeps popping mirrors, and they're not the real Savage Man, and he keeps creating mirrors. It's very strange. Um, but then when Lan tries to give orders a mirror version of land shows up and gives conflicting orders. So you've got two lands on each side of Mega Man shouting orders at him, like go left, no, go right, go up, no, go down. 
you would think that, okay, this is strange, but there's only one real land, so only one real land can load battle chips, so that's all you got to do. But it turns out that the fake land can also load battle chips. So both land and the fake land load a double soul chip. Fake land loads roll, real land loads torch, and it nearly short circuit me- short circuits Mega Man, um, which is you know, yeah, okay, obviously, but I, I actually kind of would have liked to see like a combined double soul, like torch roll soul. I think that would have been f- cool, but whatever. Um, but then Mega Man asks a question and says, you know, Lan, who do you think is your greatest rival? Now, even if you didn't know who Lan was, you prob or didn't know him really well right you probably wouldn't give the answer that the fake land gave because the fake land said higsby and i'm sorry if you know higsby for any length of time you will know that he is not rival material he is just he's not that guy he don't have that dog in him i don't know why you would say that um real land says child obviously uh Mega Man busts the fake land. Real land loads boomerang, I think it was. Loads a battle chip. I don't remember which. And and yeah, it is boomerang because it breaks all the mirrors in one go and also damages Savage Man. Savage Man activates his dark chip, activates a dimensional area. Uh, we get to see it. It's another weird one where they just spawn. They don't launch him from the satellites, but we do get to see this really cute image of Metars invading and causing, you know, death and destruction, uh, but they're cute. So it's okay. That's just how it works. Um, Mega man's about to get defeated. Child loads proto man in proto man saves Mega man child's back. Mega man comes out to the real world. They cross fuse. Um, there's this weird instance where Savage Man launches both of his hands and then his head to attack cross fused Mega Man, uh, which is strange, but whatever. Um, Lan loads up the Fire Sword Dildo Bat chip, uh, and then Yuki's muted right now. He's he's talking to his father, but um, Mega Man uses Area Steel. And Area Steel allows Mega Man to teleport right next, like instant transmission right next to Savage Man and slice him. So, you know, that's cool. We we established that Step Sword is a thing. We established that Area Steel does not allow people to teleport anymore. And then they allow Area Steel to teleport. And uh yeah, that's yeah. that's episode eight. Honestly, a decent set of episodes, despite, like, having to deal with the Bubble Man shit. My my overall feeling, because I watched these episodes last night, my overall feeling, now that I've had time to, like, let it marinate in my head, is episode five was hot garbage and I hated it. And if you remove episode five from the equation, this block was great. Like, episode six, seven... Six is kind of weird with Bullman, but seven and eight were fantastic episodes. No animation quality issues, no like some weird, you know, dubisms, but other than that, they're pretty good. Huh. Yeah. Double, I'd like to I'd like to just thank you real quick for a moment because um because of our conversation, I'll be making a little bit of extra money. Please be excited. <laughs> Who, wait. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, if you're going to, okay, if you're going to, it, if you're going to make money at my expense, then you at least owe me the name of who is shooting me. Well, I mean, the name will be given once they shoot the bullet. No, no, no. I want to know now. 
You can't march the, me. You can't listen, march me to the firing. No, I don't no, give no. out my client name. <laughs> you cannot march me to the execution line and then not tell me who the firing squad is. That's not how this works. You have to tell me who's paying well, yeah, for the right. bullet. They, they blindfold the, ex- the executioner squad. Okay, that was not a good analogy. Listen, <laughs> you, you cannot, you cannot do this um, to me. The person in question has has told me to just say it's a demon, and that's all you get. Oh, I think I know who it is, man. Fuck you, <laughs> person in chat. Yeah, I I, like I know who you are. You don't even know what the bullet is yet. That's the worst part of this, actually. No, but I can imagine. I don't think you can. I, th- I think I can't imagine. I think it's got something to do with a very personal story that I decided to share with people that, yeah, I thought we were all friends here. I thought we were all having a good time. And, uh, and, uh, now, now I'm being taken advantage of that's, Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't actually care. You, you, you do what you like. You're getting paid for it at least. So nothing, um, nothing I ever make is intended to harm. And you know that. Anyway. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If if something was out of line, I would have actually said something. I don't. I would not share something that I believe would be detrimental to yeah. and <laughs> to I, me. I I have my limits when it comes to like art. I don't do like fucking. I've never been asked to do this. I but fucking I've heard of people who have. I I would not do like fucking revenge shit or like fucking torture a character, etc. Shit like that is like fucked up. Yeah. Also, like, I think the worst I've ever been asked is like, hey, can you draw this person's character in an NSFW thing? And the first words out of my mouth were, does the person in question consent to this? Because I'll do it if they do. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've I have had some artist friends that have like turned down requests of um, like, hey, this YouTuber persona or whatever. I want to see them uh, like horribly tortured or you know fucked or whatever and without yeah, permission it's just like yeah don't do that but that's where it gets fucking weird yeah um okay so yuki's still on the phone uh and he's telling us to ping him when it's over so do you have any final thoughts shora um i'm going to be honest here with what i think so far mm-hmm. access has already been more or less better than uh than fucking nt warrior yeah that is that is my current opinion on things i don't know if that'll change in the future it it'll depend on how many more bubble man episodes we get but i'll i'll say this i think bubble man is the less terrible option between that or getting more cut man brother episodes mm. Mm, they're both because i can bad, dissociate yeah. they're both really they're both bad and they're both pretty close to one another but i think i think bubble man just ekes out being the least terrible because he hasn't done anything offensively like annoying to me yet because mm-hmm. we got a decent episode with a neat net navi and he was just there to be annoying every so often the cut man brothers have not had a single good moment yeah I, I, I guess I generally agree with that statement. Like, I the think back brothers to... also have the debuff of being anime original characters that shouldn't exist. That too, but I th- I think back to NT Warrior season one and the number of jobbers and filler episodes of poorly animated horse shit, where we just like nothing fucking happens and there's no yeah like. That part just I keep that fresh in my mind whenever I see access episodes because I'm just like, okay, even the bad access episodes are better than the average season one episodes. Yeah, I'm tentatively hopeful that we will not get as many shitty fucking like one off episodes as we did with NT Warrior, but then I look and I see that there are fifty one episodes in this, in in access and I go, oh yeah, at, at we're gonna see some stinkers. I just have a feeling I hope that they're not, you know, all the level of bad that the Bubble Man episode was, but you know. 
Yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. I mean, I I have a feeling this will be okay, and like, fucking, you know, we get through this, we'll, we'll eventually get to the fucking beast stuff, and I'll get to see my side beasts, I'll get to see Gregor and Falzar, and I'll pop off, because I love those fucking designs. I'm... The more I think about it, the more like I really want to get through access so that we can n- not just do dot hack, but I'm actually interested because I don't know anything about Digimon. So it would be like going into a series that I don't know anything about and seeing like cool designs. Uh, Digimon and- will be fascinating. And I've I've got like a person or two who are interested in uh, joining up for that. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. but. It, it, we're talking way in the future. Um, yeah. yeah, good, good round of episodes, except for the first one. Uh, that's pretty much it from us. Uh, this will go up on YouTube when Yuki gets to, gets to it. Um, and yeah, I don't have anything further. Yuki, Greetings. do you have any final words for this episode? Now kill yourself. Wow. What the fuck, Yuki? <laughs> Wow, Yuki, that's, well, I mean, hey, Yuki's the one that does the editing, so I guess we just got to listen. That's unfortunate. Um, Damn. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Okay, you can't (laughs) can't do that. Um, All right, so that's it for us. Thank you for watching. Uh, We'll be back, if not next week, then in two weeks. We we had a break because we had some birthdays going on, and then we had some scheduling conflicts. It happens. Uh, But then we'll be back hopefully soon so take care everybody hey after the podcast future yuki here since i wasn't at the end of the podcast recording due to a personal phone call i'll go ahead and give the battle chip recap right now and i'll just go ahead and leave land for last because he's always going to be the one that uses the most chips so we're going to go ahead and start off with mr match who uses flame tower and sensor one Gonna move on over to Plantman, who uses Ice Ball, Lance, and Bubble Shot. Next one, which is Tamako, which is uh, kinda cheating, because Metal Fist isn't technically a battle chip, but she does slot in a battle chip while calling out Metal Fist, so I'm calling that as an anime exclusive, so... I guess, cheating with a technicality. Now onward to Lan, we have Single Bomb, Wind, Longsword, Boomerang, Mega Cannon, Shotgun, Roll Soul, Spreader, Step Sword, Yo-Yo 1, Heat Shot, Sword, Lava Cannon 1, High Cannon, Fire Soul, Flame Tower, Godstone and Curse Shield, which I'm technically counting because, uh, Lan and the Mirror version of Lan, uh, they both mention it, and since Mirror version of Lan has the exact same battle chips that regular Lan has, which I am assuming because uh, both of them used uh, Soul Unison chips at the exact same time, so I'm assuming they both have the exact same chip library, so I'm counting that. And to finish this off, Aqua Sword, Fire Sword, Life Aura, Area Steel, and Step Cross. Don't know if this was mentioned in the uh, episode, because I don't think I was there near the end. Lan, why the fuck are you using Area Steel and Step Cross? Step Cross already does that, you fucking Nimrod. <laughs>